So last time we saw that the Fourier series for a function f of x was equal to a naught over two plus a sum from n equals one, n equals one to infinity, some constant a n times cosine of n x plus some constant b n times sine of n x, where that a n was equal to one over pi integral minus pi to pi f of x cosine of nx dx. And likewise, that bn was given by 1 over pi, same integral, but with sine nx. Okay, that's great. Uh, now what I want to do is look at rewriting this whole thing in terms of complex exponentials and, and see what we get. So, uh, Recall that Euler's formula, the, the, the chief way of relating sines and cosines and complex, complex exponentials is uh, e to the i x equals cosine x plus i sine x. And likewise, e to the i x is equal to, well, cosine's an even function, so we still have cosine x, but sine's an odd function, so you pull out a minus 1. And so, I mean, what are we trying to do? We're trying to re-express our Fourier series in terms of complex exponentials. So let's solve for cosine and sine in terms of these complex exponentials. And you can see here that uh, we can do that if we add these two. So if we, if we add these two functions, what's going to happen? We're going to get two cosine x, and then the sine is going to disappear, so we can isolate cosine x. And so we get that cosine x is equal to e to the i x plus e to the minus i x over 2. And likewise, sine x is equal to e to the i x minus e to the i x over 2 i. And you might remember these as being the real and imaginary part of e to the i x. That's, that, that's one way of thinking about this. Okay, so we've got that. Now let's substitute that back into uh, this equation up here and see what we get. So we have f of x equal to a naught over 2 plus sum n equals 1 to infinity a n and then we have cosine in x which is going to be e to the i n x plus e to the minus i n x all over 2 and likewise uh, we're going to have plus b n times uh, e to the i n x minus e to the minus i n x all over 2 i. Okay, that's good, but let's simplify this a bit and, and try and get things in terms of just e to the i n x and e to the minus i n x. And so we can do that. And, I'm, and I'll do something in this next step, which is uh, we have a 1 over i right here. And then 1 over i is equal to minus i. So I'm, I'm going to pull out a minus i right here and work with that. Yeah, and so what are we going to get when we do that? We're, well, we're going to get uh, one sum from n equals 1 to infinity, which is going to be a n minus i b n over 2 times e to the i n x plus, and I'm, I'm going to write these two sums separately, So, uh, and then that's perfectly fine to do, uh, plus a second sum. This one being over uh, a sub n plus i b n over 2 times e to the minus i n x. Okay, uh, so this is all good. This, this looks great. Um, the, the only other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, rewrite this sum right here on the right hand side. So you'll notice... Um, on this left, on, on this sum right here, we have e to the i n x. On this one, we have e to the minus i n x. And it would be nice if we could get both of these to be in terms of uh, e to the i n x. And one way that we can do that is that we can flip the sign of the of the term we're summing over. So we can say let n equal minus one, and then change all the signs of n in here. And so if we if we do that, then what we get is n equal minus 1 to minus infinity a of minus n plus i b of minus n over 2 all times e to the i n x. Okay, 
Uh, so that's great. That's all. That's all perfectly legal. Um, but now, uh, let's notice something. So, so a to the minus n, b to the minus n. That's kind of funny. Let's um, well, let's see what those things are actually equal to. So we, we can we can check back up here. So we see a n is given by this integral right here, and, and the only place n shows up is in this cosine. And so when we change the sign of n, well, cosine's an even function, so nothing changes. So what we have is that a n is equal to a sub minus n. And similarly with b n, we have that b n, well, n only shows up in this sign, which means that if you flip the sign of n, you're gonna pop out an overall minus sign. So b sub b n is equal to minus b sub minus n. Okay, so that, that's great. We can rewrite these uh, a sub minus n's in terms of uh, ordinary a sub n's and b sub n's. So I'm going to do that on the next page. Uh, so, so what, what, what did we have? Uh, what, what did we have before? We had that f of x is equal to a naught over two plus some n equal one to infinity, a n minus i b n over two times e to the i n x plus, and then our our our, our modified our modified uh, sum from minus one to minus infinity over, over what? Well now, when we substitute in our new variables, we have a n minus i b n over two, and then we have e to the i n x. And so this is nice. So these two coefficients out in front are the same, and these two exponentials are the same. And the so, so what, what that means is that if we have n equals zero, we, we would have a sum from minus infinity to positive infinity. So, so do you see what I'm saying here? So we have a sum that go, that's going from minus infinity up to minus one, we're skipping zero, and then we have a sum from one to infinity. So if we had that n equals zero term, then we have a sum from minus infinity to infinity. Well, now wait a minute, let's look at this term right here. We, have, we haven't talked about this yet. What we would expect from an n equals zero, zero term is a zero minus i b zero over two times e to the i zero x, also known as a zero minus i b zero over two. Now, wait a minute, we know that b n is equal to minus b minus n. So that means that b zero is equal to minus b zero. Well, that means that b zero has to be equal to equal to zero, that's the only possible solution. Uh, so what that means is that this is equal to zero. Actually, the n equals zero term is this term right here out in front. And so what that means, so th this is this is great news, right? That means that we can rewrite this Fourier series for f of x as a single sum from n equals minus infinity up to infinity of some constant times e to the i n x where that constant is equal to a n minus i b n over two. And I'll circle this guy because this is a good, really good, really useful way to write the Fourier series for a function f of x. So that's that's great. That's a great way of writing this Fourier series. We've, we've managed to radically simplify our original series, which uh, you know, just looking back to the other page, it used to be this this three terms uh, thing right here. We had sines and cosines that we had to keep track of, and two terms that we had to solve for these a n's and b n's. Now we've managed to simplify that so it's such that we can write the whole thing in terms of just one c n and one e to the i n x. Um, but you might complain, well, the c n is still in terms of a n and b n, and I got to solve for those independently, and that's kind of annoying. Uh, so let's see if we can't find a way of simplifying this expression right here. So what do we have? We have that cn is equal to, well, <clears throat> we're going to have a one half, or one, one half and then, then an minus ibn. So we have a one over pi from the integral, minus pi to pi, overall f of x out in front. And then we have what? We have an, which is going to be going to contribute a cosine of nx. And then we have a minus i bn, which is going to contribute a sine of nx.
dx. Okay, now wait a minute. This is actually uh, th this is this is familiar. This is exactly how we write e to the minus i in x. Uh, this is how we saw it on the other page. And so what that means is that the cn is uh, can be written more simply as uh, one over two pi integral minus pi to pi f of x e to the minus i n x d x. And I'll, I'll circle this guy too because this is this is the full story right here. So so we so we've done it. What we've, we, we what we've managed to do is to take our ordinary Fourier series in terms of sines and cosines and rewrite it in terms of just one one series with uh, or, or one term with this complex exponential uh, in terms of these cn's which we can write as a single integral uh, of our function with e to the minus i and x. Uh, so I think I'm going to stop here um, and in the next video I'll start going into some examples with this. So I hope to see you there.